Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 1.6. We're going to introduce exponents. And the foundation of mathematics is order of operations. Before we start talking about exponents, we're going to talk about uh, multiplication. If we recall, what is multiplication? Well, if we have repeated addition, if we have the same number and we're adding it to itself over and over, we have repeated addition, which we can rewrite as multiplication. So in this example, we have 2. And we're going to add it to itself. So we have a total of 4 of them. So we could say 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So repeated addition is multiplication. But what if we have repeated multiplication? This is where we can use exponents. Instead of rewriting the same factor over and over, and these are factors. That's what we call uh, the values that we are going to multiply. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Essentially, what I have is 4 being multiplied, or excuse me, 2 being multiplied 4 times. So I can say 2 to the fourth power. This indicates that I'm going to take this factor, which we call the base, and multiply it 4 times, which means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And if we actually do that, 2 to the fourth, well, it's the same thing as this. So I'd say 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So 2 to the fourth equals 16. So repeated multiplication equals exponents. We can actually rewrite it to a simpler form. Uh, less time consuming than writing it over and over and over. So one thing I want to define, I used some terms here. I talked about a base, and that's the number being multiplied. And this value is the exponent. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write b as my base, because this could be any number. And we'll put it to some power. We call exponents powers n. And this would be the repeated multiplication of this base n times. So hopefully that makes sense to you. I know we're introducing variables here. But essentially, we identify the base. The base is 2. How many times am I multiplying it? 4. That's our power. And then we can find that value. All right, let's look at these examples of 2 to some power and discuss a little bit of the terminology. If we have something to the first power, well, that just means one factor of that value. In this case, I have 2 to the first power. And generally, when we talk about powers, we use the terms first, second, third, fourth, and so on. Uh, but these two have special notation. So 2 to the first is just that factor, that 2. 2 squared is 2 times 2. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times one more factor of 2, and 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And 2 to the fourth would be 4 factors of 2, like we've seen in this example, to give us 16. Now you notice this is just multiplying this one by 2. So we had 2 factors of 2. If I multiply this by 2, I now have 3 factors of 2. If I multiply this by 2, I multiplied 2 4 times. So <clears throat> we get 16. So let's look at how we evaluate these. In this example, I'm asking you to evaluate 6 cubed. Essentially, what this is saying is 6 times 6 times 6. I have three factors of 6. This doesn't mean 6 times 3. That's a common error, so try to avoid that. 6 times 3 would be 18. This is definitely not 18. If we just take it one piece at a time, 6 times 6 is 36, then I have to multiply it by that third value of 6. And maybe you prefer to write it uh, vertically here. We can multiply 36 times 6. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. We carry the 3. 6 times 3 is 18. And 3 more is 21, giving us 216. So we can see that 6 cubed is 216, a very large number. Obviously, if we went 6 times 3, we'd only get 18. So exponents, we don't multiply them. They just tell us we're going to take this base and multiply by itself that many times. All right, let's look at this example here. We have to be careful when it comes to these powers, these exponents, because they only apply to the base that they are adjacent to. 
I would not say 3 times 2 is 6 and then raise it to the fourth power. I wouldn't do that. I have to evaluate the exponent first. It only applies to this base. So I'd have 2 to the fourth. So I can rewrite this. It's 3 times 2 to the fourth, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Well, let's evaluate all these 2's first. We have these four factors of 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So this value here is 16. And 3 times 16 is 48. Now, <clears throat> the reason why we learn exponents is to shorten this up. With enough practice and repetition, you'll be able to look at this and say, well, 2 to the fourth, well, I know that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16, 16 times 3. So we can turn this into mental math if we do enough repetitions. So what I want you to do is this is your example to pause the video and try this on your own. Go ahead and evaluate 2 to the fifth power. All right, <clears throat> the next thing we're going to look at is rewriting products using exponents. Here we can see we have repeated multiplication. I have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Maybe I want to rewrite that. So if I use exponent notation, I have the base of 3. I've identified the base. And the power is 4. How many of these factors do I have? Four of them. And 3 to the fourth, if you want to evaluate that, you should get 81. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So 3 to the fourth is equal to 81. What if we have multiple factors? Well, the first thing I want to do is identify the base of each one. Here I have 2's, I have 3's, and I have 5's. So if I want to write, rewrite it using exponents, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, well, I have a base of 2. And it's going to be multiplied by a base of 3, which is going to be multiplied by a base of 5. Now I can introduce the exponents. How many factors of 2 do I have? Well, if I look here, I see I have two factors of 2. So that's 2 squared. And that's a special term that we use is squaring uh, when we have 2. Or we can say 2 to the second power. Either term is acceptable. Here we have three threes. So I have three factors of 3. So it's 3 to the third. And when we have 3, uh, we can say 3 to the third power. Or we can say 3 cubed. Cubed is another uh, term that we frequently use. And then we have two fives. So we have two fives. Now, if we recall the uh, associative property of multiplication, I can do these in any order. I could say, well, 5 squared is 25. And 2 squared is 4. 4 times 25 is 100. That's an easy way to do the math. 100 is a nice number to work with. And 3 cubed, well, that's 27. 27 times 100, 2,700 or 2,700. So we see by writing it in terms of exponents, maybe it becomes a little bit easier of mental math. We can use other properties. If we did it this way, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. 36 times 3 is 90 or 100, whatever, right? So we can see that maybe if we do it this way, we can do it a little easier, a little quicker, and it becomes mental math. But that only comes with plenty of practice. All right, so we're going to move over here. And now that we have uh, the understanding of exponents, we pretty much have all the tools behind us that we're going to use. We talked about addition and subtraction. We introduced multiplication and division. And now we've seen how exponents work. So now we can actually look at the foundation of mathematics. This is what all of those operations are built upon. And it's the order of operations. They have to be done in a certain order. So <clears throat> what we have is this mnemonic device, which stands for parentheses. This is our grouping symbols. They may be uh, brackets and braces and parentheses. So this is a brace. This is a bracket. That's a parenthesis. Maybe even absolute value symbols, which we haven't introduced yet, but we will shortly. And all these symbols, if there's one, there has to be another. They enclose something. They tell us where to start. Parentheses. Well, we're saying any grouping symbol. The next one is e for exponents. That's our base to some power. And we know that that's just repeated multiplication. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. We have multiplication and division. The thing about multiplication and division, they're actually the same operation. 
One builds them up and one breaks them down. This is repeated addition. This is repeated subtraction. We work them from left to right. Just because it's m here and d here doesn't mean we have to do multiplication first. We do these two in an order from left to right, just like we read a book. Addition and subtraction, well, those are also the same operation. One builds it up, one breaks it down. We do those from left to right. And this is how we approach any expression in mathematics. We deal with any grouping symbols. We do any exponents. We do multiplication and division from left to right. We do addition and subtraction from left to right. So really quick here, we're going to follow order of operations. And we're going to do some examples. And then I'll have you do a few on your own. If we look at this, <coughs> there are no grouping symbols. I don't see any exponents. But I do see multiplication. So that would be my first uh, starting point for this particular expression. 6 times 3 is 18. So what I like to do is work vertically. After each step, I rewrite the whole problem with my new example. And I say, OK, now I have 24 plus 18. There's only one operation left. That's addition. We can now move on to that. And 24 and 18 is 42. So we've simplified this to the number 42. Let's look at this example. We have addition and division. The first thing we do is just assess what are my operations. I see division. I have to do before addition. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. And now I can do that addition. 32 and 4 is 36. Now here's one where we have some grouping symbols. We have some brackets and we have some parentheses. You always work to the innermost grouping symbol. So if I look at this whole thing, I say, OK, I have grouping symbols. This one is inside of these, so that's where I'm going to start. 2 plus 4 is 6. So I've eliminated that by doing the operation. Then I say, OK, I did uh, some grouping symbols, but I still have more. So I'm going to continue those. 8 minus 6 is 2. And then I say, what operations do I have next? Well, I see, well, I have multiplication and subtraction. I do multiplication before subtraction. So I have this 3 times this 2. And what you should think about is this negative belongs to this value. And that's something we'll discuss when we introduce integers. So 3 times 2 is 6. This is a negative 6 or 12 minus 6. And now we can do that subtraction. 12 minus 6 is 6. Let's look at this example here. Now we have lots of operations. There are no grouping symbols, but we do have exponents. So I'm going to evaluate that and just carry the rest of the problem down. Now I still have, oh, got to have my symbol there. And now I see I have subtraction, division, and addition. Well, according to order of operations, I would do division before any addition or subtraction. So 9 divided by 3 is going to be, and this sign belongs to that number. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now 4 minus 3 is 1. And 1 plus 4 is 5. Now I work this from left to right because addition and subtraction are worked from left to right. So 4 minus 3 is 1. And if we carry that down, 1 plus 4 is 5. All right, we'll do two more examples. And I'll have some for you to try. Here we have 2 times 3 minus 3 divided by 3. Well, the first thing we do is we do multiplication or division, because there are no exponents, there are no parentheses. So we do multiplication and division from left to right. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this would be a negative or minus 1. And now we can do that uh, subtraction. 6 minus 1 is 5. Now this one's a little bit more complicated. But what we have to do here is we work it just like we read a book. We work from left to right, top to bottom. So since we have this fraction, and don't fear the fraction, it just means this is division. So the top is going to be divided by the bottom. So we're going to use order of operations on the top from left to right, move to the bottom, left to right, and then we just simplify if necessary. So I have grouping symbols. I'm going to work within there 12 minus 7. So I'm actually going to work, still work vertically. That's 5. And I carry the rest of the problem with it. And I say, well, 5 times 5 is 25. And 25 minus 4, and I'll just write it over here, is 21. Now I can evaluate the bottom. 
And I see I have exponents, so I have to do that before I can do subtraction. 5 squared is 25. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, so minus 8 and minus 10. And now I can simplify this from left to right. 25 minus 8 is 17. 17 minus 10 is 7. And now, once I've simplified the top and bottom, I can now do that division. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So we simplified it, and we got this complicated beginning gave us a nice value, a whole number such as 3. All right, so now we have these two examples. 3 minus 5 divided by 5 times 2. Use order of operations, and you will come to the conclusion. Here we have exponents, we have parentheses. Work within the parentheses, do the exponents, follow those order of operations, and attempt this one on your own. Thank you for watching.